Hi everyone, Dr. J here, and in this video I'm going to talk about different types of seismic waves. Now I normally think about uh, earthquakes, as shown in this example webpage here, and earthquakes cause uh, a whole bunch of different types of waves. They occur on the subsurface. In our class we're mainly thinking about uh, a little bit more shallow applications, but whether we um, have seismic sources that are sledgehammers or explosives, air guns or whatever, any type of, of seismic source like that will often generate all four of these types of waves, or all four of the basic types of waves that we're going to talk about. Um, and usually there's a, or often there's a dominant type of wave, uh, because for example if we hit the ground with a sledgehammer that's going for, or uh, set off an explosive, both of those sources are going to be primarily um, compressional type waves. Uh, but due to anisotropy and heterogeneity and all sorts of conversions, we will typically get all four types of body waves, regardless of the type of seismic source that we're using, or in the case of earthquakes, regardless of the type of earthquake. So let's just talk about uh, these four types of waves. Uh, there are really two basic categories, body waves and, and surface waves, and of course uh, body waves travel through the main body of a medium, through the main body of the Earth. Surface waves travel along the surface of the Earth, or along the surface of the ground in our local surveys. Body waves uh, can be separated into P waves and S waves, or primary and secondary. Primary and secondary referring to time of arrival, because P waves are faster than shear waves. Uh, they arrive first, and so they're called primary. P waves are compressional, or longitudinal, and that means that they oscillate in the same direction that they're traveling. So if I have a stinky, like this one I have here, um, I can induce a, a wave uh, like that, and that is, do that again here. So I'm oscillating my hand in the same direction that the wave is traveling. And now I'm getting interfering waves, so it's a little uh, messed up. And actually my slinky is a little bit uh, broken. Anyways, that is a compressional wave. It's oscillating in the direction that it's traveling. Now the, all, the other uh, kind of body wave is a shear wave, and that of course oscillates perpendicularly to the direction of travel, or transverse. Um, so again, going back to my slinky, if I hold my hands in this video here, I can go like this. So these are shear type waves, or similar to S waves. Now this is obviously not in the earth, it's not in a solid medium, it's an elastic material. Uh, in the earth, these, are wa these waves are traveling through a solid. So it's not like um, there's large parts of the Earth going up and down, but individual particles, small parts of the Earth, are moving in those directions. Now we also have surface waves, love waves and Rayleigh waves, and uh, those, are, those require a surface, obviously. Rayleigh waves are actually very similar to ocean waves. So if you've been at the ocean, or it can be any size lake, surface waves on water are Rayleigh waves. This is elliptical retrograde motion, uh, where the, the water is kind of going in a backwards uh, elliptical uh, direction. And then love waves are traveling kind of in this direction, um, and the amplitude that they're doing that is de decaying with depth. And so you have both, kind of both uh, transverse or shear, as well as compressional components to these types of, of surface waves. We have some diagrams here showing exactly how those waves look as they're traveling through a solid medium. So you can see the P wave is compressing and you can see this compressional wave traveling along here. Same thing for the S wave, except now we have shear motion. And here we have some animations which just illustrate how that looks. So I'll scroll up here and you can see how the, the black square is deformed as these waves travel through. Um, and then here is the anim same animations for Rayleigh and Love waves. Um, and again, just to point out that these surface waves, they're traveling along the surface, and what that essentially means is that their amplitudes are decaying with depth. So at some depth, you know, if you go down deep enough below the surface of water, you eventually you don't feel the waves anymore um, because that particle motion decays with depth. And I'll scroll down here now so you can see that uh, elliptical program elliptical retrograde motion, excuse me, for the Rayleigh waves, and the uh, transverse motion for the love wave. So you do see uh, 
that the love wave is mostly transverse motion, but you, there is some compressional motion in there as well. All right, so that's it for the four basic types of seismic waves. Often in geotechnical studies, one of the main characteristics of interest is the shear wave velocity of the shallow subsurface. And why is that? Whenever you're building a building, constructing a new bridge, any type of geotechnical or construction work, you want to make sure that your site has the strength to withstand the amount of shaking that's expected for that area. Here in Missouri, uh, a big source, uh, seismic source is the New Madrid Seismic Zone, which is located in southeast Missouri, as well as a number of other smaller seismic zones, which are located further to the east in Tennessee, the Wabash Valley Seismic Zone up getting into Illinois and even Indiana. So there are a number of seismic sources around here, and as I said, earthquakes cause strong shaking. They cause in all these different types of seismic waves. So the analysis uh, that we're going to be doing in this class is often used to characterize the strength of soil or rock, if there's rock close to the surface, for building on. And at least one reason for doing that is to ensure that whatever construction project is being worked on is going to be able to withstand shaking of whatever degree is expected for that area.